Trap is a psychological thriller film written, directed, and produced by M. Night Shyamalan about serial killer trying to escape the police attending a concert with his daughter. Riley was singing in the car while her dad was driving. She should have the singing part in the shower. Firefighter Cooper was taking her to Lady Raven's concert, a bootleg Taylor Swift dot. Riley was over the moon. She was thankful to him because he got them front row seats. Her dad kept on staring at police officers and security. During the show, Riley's dad went to the restroom, locked the door, opened his phone and stared at it like Batman. It was a live footage of a man tied up in a basement. As he was in the restroom, FBI convoys were on their way to the show's arena. He met a woman from Riley's school who also came with her daughter. Her daughter and Riley had a fallout, and Riley was really hurt. The woman asked if Riley and her daughter could still be friends, but Cooper, Riley's dad, couldn't accept so he went back to his seat and told Riley about it. Riley and her dad went to get food before the next performance began. She also wanted a shirt, but it got sold out for another group ahead of her who wanted the same thing. Her dad told her next time, but Jamie, the vendor, saw this kindness and told them to come back for what she wanted. Cooper pulled Jamie to talk. He asked him why the security was so uptight. So apparently the FBI heard that the butcher from Shadow Fight was at the concert and the whole concert was a trap just for him. Cooper immediately started looking for a way out, but every exit had at least two police officers. He was shaking in his boots. He saw a woman who was definitely not in her right state of mind by the stairs. He got everyone's attention by pushing the woman down the stairs. They security also left their post to check what had happened. Cooper told Riley that they should go outside for a while and come back later. She didn't want to and asked what was going for. She just wanted to see her bootleg Taylor Swift perform. Cooper noticed another set of police officers immediately replacing the ones that left their post. Lady Raven's second performance had begun, so Cooper went back to the show with Riley. During the show, another artist, Parker, came up from underground to join Lady Raven. Copper went to get Riley's shirt from Jamie. Jamie told him he had some in storage room. Cooper followed him. As Jamie was bringing a box down, Cooper stole his access key card. Cooper then asked him about the butcher. Jamie told him that he was a big fan of him and he'd be following him for all 12 victims, another psycho. Jamie then showed him pictures of the remains from one of the butcher's victims his friend took. Jamie's mouth like tap without a valve. He told him about everything, the security training they had and his personal security code. Jamie gave him the shirt and they went their separate ways. Cooper used the key card to enter the employee's room. He saw police officers fully geared up talking about one of his victims. He listened to them, took a cup of coffee, stole a walkie-talkie, and left the room. My man had stealth mode activated. On his way back he was stopped by a Karen. She wanted Riley and her daughter to work things out. Cooper was clearly not in the mood for small talk, but she kept on insisting during their dispute Someone got arrested, and Cooper was more agitated. He told that they can meet tomorrow for pizza. The girls will work things out there, she agreed, and he went back to the show. He was listening to the FBI's radio through the walkie-talkie as they were describing who they were looking for. He told Riley that he forgot his arm card at the t-shirt stand and left her once again. He was looking at the cameras because he wanted to trigger the fire alarm. He then heard Dr. Grant who was an FBI profiler from the walkie-talkie, alerting the security units about exactly what he was about to do. She read his mind like Charles Xavier. In any event whereby people needed to be evacuated, only women and children would be allowed to leave. The hunter had become the prey. Cooper followed the crowd upstairs. He saw a fry stand, went over there and when no one was looking, he turned up the fryer and dropped bottles in the oil. A lady passed and noticed the bottles. But before she could do anything, it blew up all over her. Cooper used the commotion to wear one of the staff's aprons and snuck to the rooftop. He was stopped by a security unit. They questioned him. He told them about the kitchen accident and that they need some air. They confirmed the accident and asked him for his keycard. He showed them, then asked about the person in charge before walking away. Riley saw him walking and asked him if something was wrong, and if he wanted to go home, he quickly made an excuse using the Karen. Cooper definitely wasn't happy. He just stared like Gustavo Fring while his eyes were twitching as if he had too much caffeine. Riley got his attention and told him about how in every Lady Raven's show, a fan gets chosen to join her on stage and backstage. 
Cooper saw this as an opportunity to find a way out. He approached one of the staff's N who happened to be Lady Raven's uncle and told him about how his daughter Riley was Raven's biggest fans and that she just recovered from having leukemia. If he had a dollar for every lie, he would be Elon Musk. Riley got picked as Lady Raven's dreamer girl. She was spazzing out. She couldn't believe it. They got a VIP pass and were escorted to the stage. Raven called Riley out to dance with her on stage. The Karen and her daughter Jodie saw Riley on stage and were in complete disbelief. Cooper also noticed Dr. Graham in the crowd. After Riley's dance, he was looking for a way backstage. He saw a young girl about to collapse and quickly grabbed her. He used that opportunity to tokai her backstage to the nurses. The nurse was really happy with the way he treated the young girl and asked if they could keep him. Riley and Cooper watched Raven's last performance from backstage. Cooper couldn't stop staring at Raven. During the last performance, Cooper asked one of the staffs if he could exit from the back after the show. She said yes. What a mastermind. After the show, Cooper once again listened to Dr. Graham through the walkie-talkie. They were going to question every single male that attended the show. Raven met Dr. Graham to check if he had been caught. Dr. Graham, she told her soon and assured her that Cooper was out moves. Checkmate. Raven met Riley after the show. She was thankful for them attending the show. Cooper realized that police are also guarding the backstage exit, so he told her about Riley's leukemia and asked Raven if they could talk alone. They went to her changing room and told how carbon monoxide could be lethal in small spaces. Raven was confused. He then told her that they were looking for him. He then showed her the live footage of the man he had tied up in a basement. Raven was terrified. He told her if didn't get out of there he would press the button for the carbon monoxide to be released and the man will join Jesus in five minutes. He gave her two options. Either she saves the guy, Spencer, or he gets caught and Spencer sees the light. They entered Raven's limo and got out. Cooper told her to drop them at nearest corner, but Raven asked Riley if she could drop her home. Riley was beyond euphoric. She called her mother and told her about what was going on. Back home, Riley introduced her mother Rachel and her brother Logan. Riley ran up to her room. Rachel rushed to the kitchen to make something, and Cooper threatened Raven to do nothing, or else he will kill the boy. Rachel made pies, and as they were eating, she asked Raven about her concerts. Raven told her that today's concert was strange because the FBI and the police department were on the lookout for the butcher, because he made a mistake. The police found a portion of a receipt to her concert in one of his fake houses. They had no idea why, because most her fans were teenage girls. Rachel asked if he was caught. She told her no, but they told her a lot about him. Raven described him to her, his age, race and the colour of his car. Cooper asked if they had pictures of his car. Raven told him no, but they knew the colour because he was an organised offender, and those types of criminals usually use black cars due to their OCD. Before she could go deeper, Cooper stopped her and asked leave because she must, must have been tired. Raven then suggested a song on their piano with Riley. She played one of Riley's favourite song and she sang along. After the song, Raven asked if anyone had seen her phone, snatched Cooper's phone on some Barry Allen shit, went to the toilet and locked the door. Cooper was livid. He knocked and kept on banging the door. Rachel, completely baffled, asked what was going on because he was scaring the kids. Raven opened the live footage for a mastermind he didn't and asked Spencer for his location after he described whatever he could. She logged into her Instagram and went live, telling all her followers about the situation. She also texted her driver to call the police. She then started shouting that Cooper is the butcher. The how was suddenly quite. Cooper opened the door, checked his phone and saw that Spencer had escaped. He placed his hand on shoulder and took her to Rachel's car. He told her that they were right about the colour of his car. They got in the car and Raven pretended to be his mum. She was demanding him to stop. Cooper knew what she was doing and played along. She then tried to persuade him to stop. He told her that he will do it one last time and then kill himself, for it was the only way to stop the monster. His family stood in front of the car terrified. Raven slowly got down from the car and took the family to her limousine. Cooper told Riley that everything will be okay with girls at school. Rachel shouldn't let the water heater guy scam into buying a new one and Logan should hand in his science project. 100% steez and composure. The FBI, SWAT and police department quickly surrounded the house. Cooper was six stars wanted. 
Cooper swept the house like it was a normal day. The Riley, Rachel and Logan were taken away by the police. A SWAT officer took over for Jeremiah and drove the limousine. He parked somewhere, opened the door and cuffed Raven. Lo and behold, it was the boogeyman himself in a SWAT uniform. He was taking her to one of his fake houses. Raven noticed the crowd and wound down her window. She cried for help and the crowd surrounded the limo. Raven broke the pipe she was cuffed to and got out of the limo. The FBI surrounded the limo. They shot the tires and checked the car. But it was. Cooper used the crowd and escaped faster than Michael Schofield. The FBI found Spencer and took Rachel's children to her sister's place. Rachel was boiling water when Cooper appeared out of nowhere and told her about how she always stood with her left hand on her hip. She was still baffled about the everything. He asked her if she ever suspected him of anything. Even if it was an affair, because of the jewelries and late nights he returned. But it didn't feel right because she perceived cleaning fluid on his clothes. Not the firehouse type, but the hospital type. She told him that she once saw him lie so convincingly, and it gave her chills. She followed him one night to one of his fake houses. There's was nothing there but a table and a chair. He told it was the place he went just to think. Rachel couldn't shake the feeling off that her husband might just be the butcher. She had a receipt from his wallet and she dropped it there. She called the police that she may have found one of the butcher's fake houses. Cooper had a meat cleaver in his hand. Rachel asked him for one last moment, to finish Riley's pie for it was a celebration pie. They sat at the table and ate the pie. Cooper expressed his rage towards her. He won't be able to see his children again because of her. He felt overwhelmed and out of control. He was going to end everything with suicide. After he had finished the pie, he used his fingers to scrape the plate. He discovered that Rachel found his bag and had drugged him. He took his cleaver, but he couldn't do anything. He was having the best acid trip. He could see and hear his mother calling him. He walked towards her as two officers tased him, but that didn't faze him. He jacked up one of them like a teddy bear and slammed him on the floor and gave his eyes a deep tissue massage. The second officer tased him again, but it didn't work. Cooper had that dog in him. Dr. Graham came in and tased him too. He was probably feeling Thor with all that electricity flowing through him. Cooper finally stopped moving and was arrested. Before he entered the police van, he picked up the bicycle in front of the house and placed it properly. A car brought Riley back and she hugged Cooper one last time. On their way, Cooper brought out the spoke he took from the bicycle. He uncuffed himself and laughed. The butcher wasn't done yet. Thank you for coming with us to the finish line to this thrilling story about Cooper. If you loved this captivating thriller, please do not hesitate to subscribe to our channel on YouTube and turn on the notification bell. Also like our videos and leave a comment below them.